Good evening. A British diplomat kidnapped in Iran has been freed after nearly 24 hours. Although I was moved around from one detention centre to another um, uh, during the 24 hours, it was quite, quite lively. I think the Iranians had this fear that you know, some miraculous SAS operation from a helicopter would suddenly come and release me. The arrest of Edward Chaplin by Iran was big news in 1987. The fallout lasted years and severely damaged diplomatic ties between the two nations. The kidnapping was apparently linked to an But this extraordinary tale actually began at a shopping centre in Manchester and is a lesson in how things can escalate. There was a vice consul by the name of Ali Qasimi who uh, was arrested by the police uh, for shoplifting. I can still remember the details, uh, two pairs of socks and a lady's purse, I think, uh, nicked from the Arndale Centre, from BHS, I think. And so he was ordered to report to a police station a week later, I think, and when he failed to show, the police went looking for him, and he, um, in the phrase of the police report, I think, resisted arrest, so there was a scuffle. This afternoon, the Iranian Ali Qasemi went to the Foreign Office to show off his injuries, such as they were. There are signs of torture by the police. This the Iranians took as a, a mortal, mortal insult that one of their diplomats, as they saw it, had been um, beaten up by the, uh, by the British police. Uh, and so the Iranian reaction was that you know, this had happened to somebody else. Someone else, another diplomat had to be mistreated, just as Mr Qasemi had in their eyes been mistreated. Edward Chaplin was stopped as he was driving his family home yesterday afternoon. He was beaten up and taken away. Well, I was moved around from one detention centre to another um, uh, during the 24 hours. So it was quite, quite lively. So then I was uh, hooded and handcuffed and put in the footwell of a car and driven back to quite close, in fact, to the Gulhat compound where my wife and family were waiting for me. Out of Tehran at last and changing planes for London. After weeks of waiting, facing all sorts of charges and amid huge media interest, Edward Chaplin was eventually sent home. Have you recovered completely from your ordeal? I feel fine, yeah. As you can see, no, no, no marks. I feel fine. Just need some, some rest, perhaps. The family in particular, perhaps, worse for them. Well, it was a big relief to finally get out because, of course, I was worried for the... <clears throat> mainly the impact on, on, on my family. It was, and it's certainly true that it was much worse for Nikki, my wife, didn't know whether I was alive or dead or being tortured or, or whatever. And Britain's retaliation for his beating and kidnapping... The episode was a disaster for UK-Iranian relations. In diplomatic terms, what then happened? Foreign Secretary registered um, our government's uh, outrage and summoned the Iranian Chargé d'Affaires. We made very clear to the Iranian authorities our view that they were responsible for securing his safety. It led to tit-for-tat expulsions, so when he and I think three others were expelled, then four, the Iranians expelled four diplomats from our um, mission, and, and so it went on. Is a prelude to Britain's toughest action yet in the tit-for-tat row. So, more or less a freeze in, in, the relationships across the, in the relationship across the board. And it took another 18 months or so before gradually uh, it started to rebuild the relationship. And it all started with a couple of pairs of socks and a lady's handbag. Yeah, that's the way, uh, that, the way these things happen. Of course, the, the situation we see in the world now is far graver than that. We're dealing with a far sure. more serious situation. But do you think there are lessons that we can learn about what's happening now? from this example, this sort of example? Anger and wounded pride uh, and shock is, is, uh, is not a good way to, to drive your policy. Um, but when something dreadful happens, it's the longer term answer, though it's, uh, it's of course very difficult to do in current circumstances, but the attempt should be made is to find ways of re-engaging, finding not just us, but finding the ways for the wider international community to re-engage with Iran, and in doing so to distinguish between what the regime gets up to and the Iranian people. Obviously a, a big obstacle to diplomatic negotiations is the fact that the Americans don't even have an embassy in Iran. No, I mean, uh, and that really is an absurdity if you think about it. Uh, I mean, for 45 years there's been no formal relationship uh, between the, uh, the world's one remaining superpower and what like it or not, is a, is a regional power to be reckoned with uh, and very influential for good or for ill. 
in the region and more widely. We are now in a situation where Iran is much closer than it ever has been to acquiring a nuclear weapon, and clearly that's a, a, a very big threat to regional stability. But the lessons are still that engagement with Iran is better than trying to sanction it to change its behaviour, because that clearly has not worked.